Oh, you just pressed play on This Week with Drunk Astrology. My name is Graham Breitenstein. I'm your astrologer and the creator of Drunk Astrology. If you're looking for someone to make astrology make sense to you and for you, well, my friend, you have come to the right place. Here on this podcast, we discuss the weekly cosmic weather. And when we break it down, we break it down. I believe that astrology can be used as a tool to inform your daily decisions and enhance your day-to-day life. So if you're ready to have a hell of a lot of fun with astrology, make some strategic decisions, and to just keep it real, (laughs) well, that journey starts right now. Now tell me what is it that she wants? Uh, Tell me what is it that she needs? And did she hear about the brand new bins that you just bought for me? Cause y'all didn't have no kids. You didn't share no mutual friends. You better sing. And you told me that she turned trick when y'all broke up in 96. What you gonna do when you can't say no? And your feelings starts to show. Boy, I really need to know. And how you gonna act? How you gonna handle that? What she gonna do when she wants you back? What you gonna do when you can't say no? And your feelings starts to show. Boy, I really need to know. And how you gonna act? How you gonna handle that? What you gonna do when she wants you back? Mm, that is a throwback for that ace, okay? Oh, that is one of my favorite all-time songs. That is Maya, Case of the X. In case you didn't know, throw that on after you listen to this week's episode. Oh, hello, Astro folks. This is the podcast for the week of March 13th through the 19th, 2023. Moving and grooving through a rocking and rolling month. Yes, indeed, we are. And this week is another one of those rocking and rolling weeks. I told you at the top of this month, go back two episodes and listen. I told you this is by far one of the most, well, it is the most interesting month this year as far as cosmic activity. Oh, Lord. Last week, we had Saturn enter Pisces, ending a two and a half year story in Aquarius. So ending a lot of Saturn returns out there. Remember, Saturn takes 29-ish years to fully circle the Zodiac. And from the time you were born, you know, zero to 29, you know, and now you're off if you just exited your Saturn return, now you're off to live your purpose, right? Your first go-round between zero and I I go up to 31, like when it's actually done. Um, but from zero to 31, you're discovering your purpose. What am I here to do? What What is my responsibility in this lifetime? And then your second batch of 29 is living that responsibility, going out into the world and making your lasting impact in whichever way feels right to you, that feels aligned with your purpose, your calling, and you're off. Now, those of you that are beginning your Saturn return, if you have a Saturn in Pisces, take a look at your chart. If uh, if you don't know, Take a look at your chart, and if you've got Saturn in Pisces, your two-and-a-half-year Saturn return begins, or has already begun, as of last week. And you'll learn that you'll be dissolving structures that are no longer serving your purpose. That is what a Saturn return does. It really, especially in Pisces, it washes you clean to get that clarity, to say, like, no, this is what I want to build. This is the direction I want to go, right? So we've already entered that energy. Now, this week, oh, my gosh, I am so thrilled (laughs) to get on the other side of this week. But let me just say it, the long-awaited Mars retrograde story finally comes to a close. We have been in a Mars retrograde story, baby, since September of 2022. Okay, so think about Mars energy for a second. Energy, drive, motivation, 
where am I, you know, the direction, my strategy towards moving forward, trailblazing, being bold and fearless, you know, like the god of war. Where am I strapped up and ready to go to battle? And then you retrograde him, <laughs> which stalls all of that energy. And in the sign of Gemini, which is a Mercury sign, which Gemini is all about communication, your thinking mind, your thoughts, your ideas. So your thoughts and ideas around where and what exactly you're going to do has been kerfuffled since September of 2022. Okay, so we're talking about, let's just count this out. September, October, when he actually stationed retrograde was the 31st. November, December, January, when he actually stationed to go direct, February, and March, now finally clearing his retrograde shadow story this week. That is a grand total of seven months. Seven. Do you hear this? Does it kind of start to make you understand wherever you've been feeling like just like a crazy person? Right? Because Gemini is nothing's. There's a beautiful card in one of my Oracle decks that is the clouds card. It's shape shifting. Nothing's taking shape. And that is exactly what this energy has been. Is you know, it on the on the positive side, it's like, oh, explore all your options. You know, do a deep dive, do research. You know, right now the direction's not not meant to be clear. But for those of us, and I'm gonna speak for myself here. As a overly abundant earth sign and with a over amount of earth sign energy in the rest of my chart, I would like some freaking stability. I would like some freaking structure. I would like to know my variables, okay? And we have not been in a cosmic environment <laughs> that has been supportive of knowing our variables. And now, after this week, we get on the other side of that. Mars clears the retrograde shadow, and now we're off. We take off into a new section of the Zodiac, and then Mars is going to later this month enter Cancer. And that's a whole nother energy in itself, but we get out of this retrograde-ish. I almost said a four-letter word, and I know I know that I'm I'm known for that, but... I don't want to do that seven minutes into this podcast. <laughs> that is the big moment this week. But we have a lot of planetary action besides that. Now, horoscope-wise, all 12 signs, I'm going to tell you where this Mars retrograde has been happening for your for your sun sign. And you can also uh, listen for your rising sign. Um, we're going to talk about that. But this week, outside of that... We know where we're coming from, which is Saturn entering Pisces. Now where we're going is next week, Pluto's going to enter Aquarius. Aries season begins, so we have the astrological new year. We have an Aries new moon next week. That's where we're going. So this is the last week of Pisces season. And one of the reasons why I just am in love with singing throwbacks <laughs> And apparently, some of you like that too, because I've had a few people reach out and say, oh my God, I catch myself singing along every single week when you sing your throwbacks. Um, so I'm, I'm happy. I hope that most of you know these songs and are singing, uh, you know, singing along too. Um, but that's great energy for Pisces season. I have been doing this, and I want you to do this if you haven't already. The last week of Pisces means it's kind of like the, the last little respite before we zoom off into Aries and we're kicked over into the astrological new year in the sense that we are now at the starting gate of the Zodiac, Aries being the first sign. So this is our real last week to kind of rest, relax, and to kind of find our wusa. But... I've been listening to, like, all my favorite throwbacks. Like, I've been on, I just did a um, two-day Christina Aguilera stripped album, top to bottom, just like every time I'm in the car, that's what's playing. Um, then I've done Shania Twain, Essentials. Now, you, those of you that don't know, I grew up in Kentucky. Country music is my heart and soul. 
So been listening to my Shania. Um, I've even thrown in a little George Strait in there, Alan Jackson. You know, there's like I've got my my country, 90s country that's just, you know, Brooks and Dunn, all of those things. And that has been cleansing and purifying my soul because as mentioned before, the Mars retrograde energy is just taking its toll on your astrologer. <laughs> But the music, these throwback jams are like getting me through. So whether it's music for you, whether it's, you know, picking up an old poetry book or uh, going to a, a, a stand up, uh, um, um, open mic night, you know, something. But like get in, dive into the creative arts space because that is where you are most supported during Pisces season. And it really is like it has just made the 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 most stressful days better you know just just to tap back into like driving in my first car my nissan sentra with a spoiler on the back that i just thought was like oh yeah my sentra is so sporty um and just having that in the six disc changer in my car and just throwing on these songs 112 jagged edge i don't know if anyone was into you know hip-hop and r&b back then but Oh my gosh, like uh, all of the, all I just like I can see myself back in that car driving down the streets of Kentucky and like being in a space of like, oh, this is it, man. You know, a cruise, like a real roll the windows down and cruise type of energy. Um, so we have that. Take advantage of it this week. It's it will help you, whatever your version of that is. That's my version, but I share that with you to inspire you to get tapped into this last little bit of Pisces energy. Okay, now that's the overall vibe. Now I'm going to say there is a lot of planetary action. Mars has his third and final aspect to Neptune, which is a square. We'll talk about it in a second um, before he clears his shadow. But the Sun and Mercury are do si doing this week, okay? They are... Mercury catches up with the sun. So all this week, they just bounce back and forth. The sun makes an aspect, then Mercury makes an aspect. Then they meet up, which is always an interesting energy when the sun and Mercury uh, meet up. And then Mercury passes the sun, and then Mercury makes an aspect, then the sun makes an aspect. So they're doing this little dance this week, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about. Um, but before we get into all of that, let's, uh, let's just cover quickly just two little news board items. Um, because the Aries new moon falls on next Tuesday, those of you that are in the SoCal area, I am, uh, teaching a astrological new year manifestation workshop for that Aries new moon this Sunday at Tansy in the garden. And you know, my friend Nadia with Plant to Take Cafe will be there with delicious coffee drinks and moon milk, which is a drink she made for my event specifically, which I just love. Um, so if you're there, make sure you uh, make sure you get registered. I will put the link in the show notes. Remember, the show notes are just scrolling up from the screen you're on right now the with the episode info and description. And you're going to see, I'm going to drop a link in there for the Tansy New Moon Workshop. Get registered, come out. We're going to talk about all things. Like this is the real, like from a cosmic perspective, this is the real new year. Okay, so if December 31st failed you, if the Lunar New Year failed you, this is the opportunity to get realigned with the with the top of the Zodiac, right? And that is one of my missions is to get my listeners to get my clients living in sync with the cycles so that things you are you're working with the energy you're not going against it and other than that just another reminder the yearly readings are going away and let me see i'm gonna count now so i don't lie to you let me turn the pages here we are at this point and we've got one two Less than three weeks now. We've got until Friday, March 31st, and then the yearly readings go away until 2024. So just keep that in mind. Now, also, if you're listening to this on Sunday the 12th, it's daylight saving. So hopefully your phone 
moved it, you know, uh, changed the time up uh, automatically, but make sure you change the clock in your car, on your microwave, on your oven, your alarm clock, if you still have one of those. Make sure you're adjusting that so you don't wake up tomorrow and have to go to work and you're an hour late. <laughs> the scramble can be real. Okay, so those are the those are the two news board items. Um, really quick and short this this uh, this week, and let's go into the horoscope for Mars, shall we? Where have the brakes been pressed and released, then pressed again? It's like we take two, three steps forward, and then we have to shuffle our steps back. And then do it all over again. We make a little bit of progress and then we have to move back. Where has that energy been kerfuffling, muffling things up? <sighs> Some of you, or maybe it's just me, might say, um, every aspect of my life has been <laughs> like this. I'm going to say this too before I get into all 12 signs. The week that a planet like this, clearing this energy that has been going on for so long, it can pop the story. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind as I go through all 12 signs. I just want you to keep in mind that this week you you can expect like some sort of a pop. And sometimes a pop can be like a moment of clarity. Remember, Gemini is our thinking mind. And we are under Virgo full moon energy, so revelations, illuminations, they're all still happening. These aha moments internally are happening. I had a huge one the night of the full moon where everything kind of zipped into place. Now, of course, I am a Virgo, so that was definitely written in the stars for me, and it lit up my chart like a Christmas tree. Um, but it was that mental clarity that was like, oh, my God, that is what I can do. That's how I can shift my structure, shift my paradigm. Like, oh, my gosh, okay, I'm, it, th things are starting to come together now. Um, and just keep in mind, because Virgo, under that full moon, that's a Mercury-ruled sign. And now Mars and Gemini and an, another Mercury-ruled sign, it, these, these pops or these revelations are, can be experienced more internally so I don't want you to think that every time we talk about aspects, especially with something like Mars and Gemini, that it has to be some kind of external thing that you are, you know, something that's like, oh my God, not that it can't be, but I feel like some people listen to this podcast or listen to astrology, follow astrology, you know, however loosely or tight you may be following because they want to anticipate the big events. I get that. I totally get that because, you know, from a from a standpoint of like, I just want to know what to expect, I understand. Um, but don't discount the the internal, the personal shifts because astrology is great for that to say like, wait, but what was that, you know, in, in a day where you make how many decisions? It's like, like over a million decisions or something a day. I don't know. Um, but, you know, in a day where we make trillions of decisions, you might get lost, you know, some like little aha moment. You might be like, you know, you might miss the fact that like, oh, that was it. That's the aspect Graham was talking about. I just realized that, you know, you're starting to connect the dots. This Mars retrograde finally coming to a close this week. You, you can finally connect the dots with what your next steps are. What does it look like moving forward? You've been in a haze, okay? We've been foggy AF about our direction and about where we're going. And now you can finally overcome that energy this week by connecting the dots, okay? So think about that as we're going through all 12 signs. Okay, so we're talking about Gemini. So let's start with the air signs, then go water, then fire, then earth. So... Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, talk about direction, <laughs> the compass being a little off, right? Now, it, it, that was what was meant to be true, you know, kind of having like this like directionless kind of just like, well, 
I guess I'm just going to kind of like go here. I don't really know like what else I'm supposed to do, but I guess I'm just going to like go here. Now, your sense of direction, your sense of intention now starts to come clear, starts to get into focus. So I want you to think, where do you need to be a little extra bold? Where do you need to, where can you tap into some fearlessness about okay, I'm going to wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm going here. Or I'm going to, um, this is for all of you, okay? Um, I'm I'm going to say declamatory now. I'm going to go there. I'm going to give this. I'm going to do this. These are all Mars key words, but this has been in the you, yourself, and you zone and really like putting yourself in a, leadership position of of some way or just being the leader of your own life and taking it by the reins yourself and saying I'm going to I'm pointing the compass now not going to let any anybody else or not going to let any other external influence dictate which way I'm going now I am saying or boom this is what I'm going to do okay Now, water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, you have been in the hidden realm. You have been swimming in the deep, swimming in the muck, needing to really excavate your demons, exercise the demons, okay? You have been really asked to dive deep and explore your emotional depth, explore your, I mean, it really is, exploring your demons, and looking at the muck of your life, looking at what has been hidden, what hit, what you have kept kind of like pushed down in the hidden realms, and, and really pulling that up, any kind of self-sabotage, any kind of negative repeated patterns, all of that has been just in this cycle, and now you start to you start coming up for air. You start getting that sense of like, you know what? I'm ready for this chapter to be done. I'm ready to wring out the the last vestige of this darkness or this depth, this like oh, this period of time where you know you might have been crying more often, you might have been down in the dumps a little bit um, or a lot of it. And now it's finally like, oh, you're almost at the surface, and then, then you you take off, right? When Mars enters Cancer, you're gonna be like, you're gonna get that energy, and you're gonna go, bam, like now I'm going. But right now it's like that last little squeeze. So just keep going, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. You're almost there. Okay, and you finally will start to feel, you should start to feel the light at the end of the tunnel being like right there. Okay, you're just you're just about to turn that new leaf. Let go, let go, water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, let go of what no longer serves you. Acknowledge what needs to be released and then bid adieu. Now, fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, it's all about your close-knit relationships, your partnerships, your your collaborations, your your groups, your communities, anything that you're a member of, okay? You might have had some might have had some some difficult relationship things going on, okay? Now remember, when you hear relationships, I have to like de-influence that word. Because a lot of people think just it just means romantic. I want you to think about relationships across the spectrum. Romantic, yes, but platonic, friendships, family, found family even. Okay, so fire signs, I want you to just kind of evaluate your relationship story. How has that gone through like a roller coaster since September? Okay, and again, Mars retrograde in Gemini is things not taking shape. Well, now things are starting to get clear. If you began any kind of new relationship over the last six, seven months, um, that can either turn a new leaf or that can also say, mm, if you're already kind of suspicious, like, is this going to come to an end? Is this something that has 
staying power. It is something that, you know, it might have served its purpose. Things begun in a retrograde like this with Mars being uh, one of the key relationship planets. It's how you fight. It's how you have sex. Um, it's it's that ignite, that chem, uh, kinetic um, ignition, that chemistry between two people. Um, the flame can sometimes go out when this story comes to a close. So just kind of evaluate, you know, if, if something began in the last seven months on the relationship front, whether it's work w w across the spectrum, where, where do you stand now? This is a great evaluation time of saying like, okay, so are we, are we, are we ready to go to the next level of this thing? Or have we kind of come to that, like, it's not going to go any further than this. It's great evaluation time um, on the relationship front for the fire signs. Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, your work, your work, your finances, your sense of stability. Hello, your Virgo astrologer is like, we just make it make sense. That has literally been my quote the last couple of weeks. Just make it make sense. Just what can I expect? <laughs> How do I take this moving forward? What do I do? It all starts to come together this week, Earth sign. So I want you to keep that in mind. What is your work story? What journey have you been on? What roller coaster have you been riding on up and down and up and down? Um, if you've been trying to get a new job and things have just not been landing or just not aligning, well, now things start to correct the clarity that you've been looking for and that you need starts coming into focus as we clear this energy on Thursday, by the way. March 16th, this Thursday is when Mars clears his retrograde shadow. Um, so there is, there's just, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. I will speak on this myself as an earth sign and an earth rising that, um, no, Virgo, sun and rising that it's it's very much been <laughs> it's you know your your career your professional trajectory like where am i going feeling like you're stepping back but trying to move forward it's all been it's all been a muck and now a muck a muck a muck a muck sorry hocus pocus um and now finally as of thursday we get on the other side of this and have that pop some way shape or form okay so that's the horoscopes for everybody let's talk about the moons really really quick remember if you are a daily dose of stars subscriber that you will get each and every day broken down in that daily podcast um, if you want to subscribe just go to the show notes scroll up um, we do have let me not let me not forget to mention we have a new daily doser Donna dies just um, subscribed. So welcome to the Daily Dose, and I hope that you find the, the clarity and the direction, and especially because this week we do have uh, the Nodes of Fate Direct, um, which are these faded opportunities when you should absolutely take advantage of the energy, shake hands, um, send a pitch, make a proposal, uh, work on something that is tied directly to your destiny and your fate um, but daily dosers are the ones that get the the dates for that type of stuff so anyway donna dies welcome to daily dose happy to have you here happy to have you in the in the in the tribe um, and those of you that are like wait what's daily dose just scroll up and tap that link and it'll take you to a landing page that i created that answers all your questions and gives you the direct link to subscribe. So on Monday, the 13th, the moon is in Sagittarius. On Tuesday, Sag moon all day. Very busy day. We'll talk about it in a second. And then Wednesday, the Sag moon goes void at 1.50 a.m. with a trine to Venus. So Sag moon is great, working beautifully, collaboratively within relationships and partnerships. That is wonderful energy. Then at 5.06 a.m., remember all the times I give you our Pacific Standard. 5.06 a.m., the moon enters Cancer, uh, Capricorn. So sorry. Moon enters Capricorn at 5.06 a.m. on Wednesday the 15th. 
It is in Capricorn all day the 16th. And on the 17th, the Cap Moon goes void at 7.14 a.m. with a conjunction to Pluto. Now, that can go either way, conjunctions. Um, remember, Pluto is at the anoretic degree of Capricorn, kind of just pushing on the last... Uh, I can't do math right now in my brain, but Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. Okay, so it is pushing and closing out that energy from 2008 to 2023 um, before he enters Aquarius next week. So that's potent, potent transformation and change. It can be, um, it can be difficult or it can be progressive. Um, it really goes either way with these conjunctions. Then at 7.25 a.m. on Friday, the moon enters Aquarius, where it is there for the rest of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, going void at 3.33 a.m. Hello, angel number, with a trine to Mars. So great, great, flowy, collaborative um, energy when it comes to your direction moving forward. Again, that trine to Mars with the moon. Mars is clear of his retrograde story at that point. So lovely. We love it. That is great. Then at 8.12 a.m., the moon enters Pisces on Sunday the 19th, and it is there until Tuesday where it goes void at 8.58 a.m. with a sextile to Pluto. So positive, again, working with that Pluto just before, days before he enters Aquarius. So that is positive and uh, moving forward in a way that, that's exciting, and but, you know, it's a little unnerving at the same time kind of like ooh, this is this is like you know this is pushing on a lot of work that i've been doing since 2008 okay now getting into the planets because of course i'm jazzed up and speaking a lot um on tuesday mars has its third and final square to neptune now i want you to think back to october 11th of 2022 and november 19th of 2022 when the first two aspects in this sequence took place, and now the third and final is here. So go back to, just like think of those weeks, right? Just kind of look around and say what was going on. Mars squared Neptune, think about it. Mars and Gemini, thinking mind, trying to get direction, clarity on a sense of direction and action. Neptune's in Pisces in La La Land, right? You know, what do I create? What am I... Uh, what well, what's my what's my big vision what you know is the what where are my limits i have no limits i'm boundaryless right and mars is just like yo just tell me where to go tell me where to go huh tell me where to go ah tell me where to go ah tell me where to go sorry a little e40 for you um so now third and final moving forward it's like boom clarity yes let's go also that day, we have a Sagittarius quarter moon, which is more, it's that halfway point between the Virgo full moon and the Aries new moon. So this is self-inquiry time, okay? You know, where do I stand with what I need to let go, with what I need to release? That's a good um, energy for that. Then the sun and Mercury do -si do start. Sun has a conjunction to Neptune on Wednesday. That's coming up and giving light to the dream, giving light to the vision, like, okay, here's what it is. Then the next day, Thursday. Now, Thursday's crazy, okay? Daily dosers, we're going to go more in depth in this. But Mars clears his retrograde shadow. But he has a square to the sun. And then Mercury has its conjunction to Neptune, right? So sun does it on Wednesday. Then Mercury does it on Thursday. Sun squares Mars. Venus squares Pluto. Then Venus enters Taurus at 3.34 p.m. So just before she leaves Aries, where she's in warrior mode, she goes to Pluto and says, Huh? What? What did you say? What do I need to change? What, what is going on? What power struggle am I in? And then she enters Taurus, where she's happy as a clam. She's Aphrodite. She loosens up. But then Mercury has a square to Mars at 9.49 p.m. that night, right? You hear all of that? That is one, two, three, four, five aspects, not including the Mars clearing his shadow. Busy, busy day on Thursday, and that moves over into Friday where the Sun and Mercury come up and meet each other. Don't fight on Friday, okay? No, everybody's going to think they're right. Self-righteous is just like the way it goes with Sun and 
Mercury meeting up like this, and they're in Pisces, so everybody's got feelings, but they don't necessarily have their words together, okay? So you might find that people are running highly sensitive. You as well could be running highly sensitive. You might feel really jazzed up, but listen, don't fight, okay? This is let it go. Let it go. Let it go like Elsa. Venus has a sextile to Saturn that day, so moving forward within authority uh, structures. Saturday, do you hear all of this? Saturday has a Mercury sextile Pluto. Mercury enters Aries. Okay, so we've got Venus and Mercury both changing signs this week. That enough is alone. That alone is enough energy for one week to have two personal planets change signs. But we have all of this other jazz going on, okay? So keep in mind your Mars story as you move forward this week. It's rocking and rolling. Just look for the pop. Feel for the pop, okay? Remember, it can be personal. It can be in, in, in within you. It is. It can be an internal experience, okay? Have a wonderful week. I'll see you throughout the week on social media. I've been a little quiet lately. Some of you have reached out and asked. I've been a little quiet, but I am still there. Don't worry. I'm still reading your messages and responding to those who reach out, okay? Have a wonderful week. I will see you next time. Bye. This is Graham Breitenstein, and you've been listening to This Week with Drunk Astrology. If you want to follow Drunk Astrology, head to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and hit that follow button. And if you want to learn how to put astrology in motion for you, head to DrunkAstro.com and get on the insider list. If you haven't already, subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, and Google platforms. Tune in next week for yet another opportunity to work in sync with the stars. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you soon.